Hello, I'm here at Aarhus University in Denmark, where some of the world's leading cryptographers are hard at work designing the intricate map that goes into the Concordium blockchain network. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Chaya Ganesh. Hi, Chaya. Hi. <laughs> Can you uh, tell us who you are? Sure, thank you. Uh, I'm Chaya. I'm a postdoc here at Aarhus University. Uh, I graduated from New York University with a PhD in cryptography. I'm interested broadly in all aspects of cryptography and primarily in zero-knowledge proofs and secure computation. Very cool. So today we're going to talk about zero-knowledge proofs. Can you explain to us what those are? Sure. Uh, zero-knowledge proofs are these cryptographic constructs that allow a party, a prover, to prove to a verifier that a statement is true without revealing any further information beyond the truth of the statement. So this means that uh, one can essentially verify the correctness of computation without having to execute the computation and without learning anything beyond the fact that it was done correctly. So this gives this really powerful tool uh, that resolves the conflict between privacy and trust and leads to many potential applications. I could definitely see that. Um, so how can you prove something that's a secret? Um, so zero-knowledge proofs of knowledge have this additional property where uh, the prover also proves that he knows something and possesses something. And this allows one to prove uh, knowledge of a secret key, for example, without having to reveal the secret key itself. And one can imagine applications of um, proving possession of assets without having to re reveal how much they are or uh, proving how wealthy one is without revealing the actual wealth and so on. So if I wanted to sell you my couch and <laughs> I didn't want to, um, you know, to, you didn't want to give me all of your account details, your account balance. Uh, yes, that's a great example. Uh, so you can tell me what the price of the couch is and I can prove to you that I'm wealthy enough to buy that couch <laughs> without actually revealing uh, exactly how much money I make. My couch is very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it better be comfortable. <laughs> And so let's move on to snarks, because I hear most cryptocurrencies use a snark construct, but what is that? Uh, so a snark, uh, as an acronym, stands for succinct non-interactive arguments of knowledge. Succinct means that the proofs are really short. Uh, non-interactive means there is no requirement of interaction between the prover and the verifier. And argument of knowledge technically means uh, the property of knowledge where the prover knows uh, or is in possession of a secret witness. So SNARKs are these constructions uh, that give zero knowledge proofs with very short proofs and allow for really efficient verification. And therefore, they are really suited for uh, blockchain applications. OK, so I assume there are some assumptions that SNARKs have to make. Uh, right, so there are these uh, trust assumptions, and early SNARK constructions relied on uh, a trusted setup, meaning the availability of a common reference string, which was assumed to be structured. So the trust assumption was that this available common reference string, the CRS for short, uh, was generated in the way it was supposed to be. Mm. Uh, recent advances have allowed us to minimize the uh, degree of trust we want to place on this setup. So there are these updatable setup schemes where um, parties constantly update the CRS, and the guarantee one gets is as long as one update was honest, then the setup is a good setup. OK. And so how do SNARKs work as a, you know, in reality? <laughs> at a very high level, um, we look at the computation that we want to prove as an arithmetic circuit uh, with addition gates and multiplication gates. And uh, most SNARKs, including the constructions that we use, um, are based on what is called a quadratic arithmetic program representation of a circuit, a QAP for short. And the way this works is uh, by looking at the gates and the input wires and the output wires of each gate and making sure that the values of the wires in the circuit are handed off correctly as per the logic of the gate. So each gate results in a constraint, and all the gates in the circuit together results in a set of constraints. And a quadratic arithmetic program allows us to pack all these constraints into one single constraint that can be efficiently verified. OK, and what is that one single constraint? Uh, the advantage of using a quadratic arithmetic program is that uh, all these constraints about arithmetic circuits are translated into a constraint about polynomials. And uh, two polynomials that are not identical will differ at most points of evaluation. So this idea is implemented by um, evaluating the polynomials at a random point 
and this is where we rely on the trusted setup. So the trusted mm -hmm. setup procedure chooses a random point of evaluation and outputs an encoding of this so that neither the prover nor the verifier knows what the random point is. But both of them have the encoding of the random point. Mm. In addition, uh, this encoding admits a certain form of homomorphism where one can evaluate on the encoding without actually knowing the encoded value. So now we can have the prover evaluate these polynomials at the random point that he does not know in a sort of blind way. So he'll blindly evaluate these polynomials. And now if he did not have the correct polynomial, then he cannot give the correct answer at the randomly chosen point because that is secret and unknown to him. And the verifier catches him cheating if he attempts to. So this is uh, at a high level how SNARKs work and this is the soundness part. We get the property of soundness that a prover cannot cheat because he does not know the secret point of evaluation. And to achieve zero knowledge, that is to make sure that nothing is leaked from the proof, uh, when computing the proof, the prover adds some randomization to it. Mm. Uh, but this randomization is done in a way so that uh, it preserves the verifier's test, but leaks nothing beyond the validity of the statement. Very mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> so um, are SNARKs useful to obtain encrypted accounts? Is that useful in that? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, so to have an encrypted account mm -hmm. system, um, we can imagine amounts being encrypted. So there are a set of ciphertexts mm -hmm. where each ciphertext contains an encrypted value. And to make a transaction, a transaction consists of um, a new set of ciphertexts, an encrypted amount, and a zero knowledge proof, where the proof proves that um, the transaction is done correctly, mm -hmm. meaning that the encrypted amount that I'm sending is not more than the uh, sum of the values inside the ciphertexts and that the new set of ciphertexts takes care of the transaction arithmetic. And both these tests involve doing range checks where uh, one has to make sure that values are in a certain range to prevent wraparound, and this is where we use zero-knowledge snarks. Cool, all that sounds great. I can't wait to see the applications that you build with these. Uh... Yes, it's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, cool, well thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.